you know, week four. Just trying to go one to one to know this week, and and um, you know, I think guys are excited about it. Um, you know, we need to go out and empty our tanks um, and, uh, and go, you know, go one to know for the week. Um, we got a good football team coming in Youngstown State. Um, a lot of memories back there, um, and um, you know, it should be a ball game. They got a good football team. They'll be ready to go. Coming off last week's game, and they'll give us their best shot, guaranteed. Pat, how do you guys? How do you guys keep your your plan of attack against the team like we were talking about Monday that likes to possess the football and slow the game down? You know, I know West Virginia wanted to do that to you guys, but now nah, it seems like this is going to be a thing that you guys have to counter. Yeah, um, you know, start to get off the field, right? You know, um, we got to be able to stop the run, um, and you know, you can't let them go three yards on first down, three yards on second down, even though those are wins. Defensively, three yards on third down, let them go for a fourth and one again. You know, you can't let them. You know, so we got to stop the run, period. And we got to get off the field on defense. And then offensively, we've got to, you know, when you get the ball, you got to, you know, use it, get down the field. I don't care if you score in 30 seconds or you score in, you know, an in, in eight minute drive. We got to possess the ball and, and, uh, and sustain drives. You mentioned how at the beginning of the week, or well, you know, Sunday, PJ was, you know, saying, hey, come smile. You know, like, you know, we have about you guys won. Have you seen your guys kind of, Get old, you know, embrace the 24 hour rules you, that you impose and lock in this week? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, again, you know as a coaching staff, you know, we all have the same message and they understand. Um, you know, again, we've had, you know, we had good practices too. So we've had, you know, I don't think there'll be any, you know, letdown on our end. If they're hoping for a letdown, nobody will let down. For you personally, well, I'll, be, I'll be high. Like, philosophically for you, does, does time of possession mean less to you than it did 10 years ago? It does, Chris. I mean, it does. Um, you know, you can be an eye pro team and, and, and win the time possession. You can lose it, and you can spread it out and go fast. And so, I'm not really worried about time possession. Um, you know, it's, it's it's one of those things we're going to look at and know, um, but it's not a life or death. You know, I mean, the number one thing critical to winning is turnovers and protect the ball. If you protect the ball, uh, you have a chance. And we're you know plus two last weekend. You count plus three if you count. You know, block punt for a touchdown. We're plus three. That's how you win football. With his athleticism, does Bo Brungard remind you of the last two quarterbacks he played in the previous two weeks? Yeah, this guy's gonna he's gonna drop back, look at his first three, and he's gonna take off running. Um, and we've got you know, so he, he's athletic. He can run. He's he's got wiggle. Uh, he can put his foot in the ground and change direction. So you know, we've got to we've got to contain him and um, keep him in that pocket. Does that change your strategy as far as how you guys like to penetrate and attack? Do you guys put in extra countermeasures, or do you just go in with the capture, not kill my guy first? Kill. So not capture, yeah, kill not so capture. We're not ever capturing anybody, you know. But we're, you know, we got, you got to go be aggressive. I think anytime you tell guys to slow down and keep in there and don't let them get out, that they don't get any pass rush. We need to go after them. And, and uh, you know, and obviously we're not literally killing anybody, but it's you know, kill or capture modes. I know you, you pay attention. Yeah, your um, starting lineup, your roster, your starting lineup, you thought you transfers. Is that something that's going to be a normal? Thing every year. He says our, ours is dotted with it. Yeah, you can start it with wide receiver, defensive end, yeah. quarterback, yeah. You know, running back. Yeah. You know, those are key positions. You're going to have to do that every year? Um, yeah, possibly. I mean, you know, like different positions. Um, you know, like I said, I think the portal's been good to us. You know, we've gotten rid of things that, you know, maybe guys that, you know, we've been able to replenish our, our, our roster the right way. So, you know, we've, we're, when guys leave, we're able to bring better ones in. And that's kind of. Which, you know, a little strategy goes to that, and, and, um, and I think you know, we've done a good job evaluating and not bringing in the same thing we, we lost or less. And you can do that very easily. I mean, you know, we're not 100%, you know, in the portal, but you know, I, I, I'd say we're in the 80s, and that's a pretty good hit. You know, you better you better win those those, those wars in the portal. You better be getting the right guys. When did that process start for you? Um, the recruiting office is working daily on it. You know, like you know, um, and then. They're working on it. I mean, obviously, nobody's in the portal, but you're looking around and seeing what's possibly available out there. One of those guys has been Nate Matt. What have you seen from him so far? His first two games. You know, Nate, Nate's been solid. Uh, you know, obviously, he's starting in game one. He's still starting game, you know, game four. So he's done a nice job. Um, you know, still learning. You know, like a lot of our young guys are still learning what they're doing. But uh, we've been happy with Nate, and I think he's got a lot more that he can still give. And when you look at Donovan's numbers, is that a credit to him, or is it more like? I'd love to see some other guys in front of him make some more tackles. Um, you know, with all the spread, you know, the spread you're seeing, I mean, it's why we play quarters, right? I mean, we can play with a guy in the middle of the field, and he's not going to make any plays. We'll put a guy down in the box. So we got extra guys in the box. Um, you know, when you're playing good football teams uh, that we played the last couple weeks, 
you know, you're going to need that extra guy. You know, they're going to they're going to they're going to block you. Uh, you can't you know defend everything with just you know seven guys in the box. So uh, that boundary safety is the guy. If we put Javon over there, he would be having safe tackles. Donald's a really good tackle. So uh, it's, you know it's what we did last year, what we did the year before. If you go back to you know years and years, you know, Randall Hill and the rest of the guys back there. That's kind of what we do. That guy's set up to make some tackles, and he's kind of like an extra linebacker. On the topic of transfers, um, you know, I think we talk about why guys go into the portal, good reasons or bad reasons. Steph Hall, he's at a Youngstown State. Mm -hmm. He's starting. He's playing a lot. Aiden Henningham's another guy. He's down at Albany State. He's starting and playing a lot. But, you know, I don't want to say, oh, this guy made a good reason or a bad reason, but are those some of the kind of like good stories about the portal? A guy who wants an opportunity to play goes and yeah, I mean, Steph Hall's a great player. He's a hitter and he's a local kid. We love Steph. And obviously, we're going to play him number one this week. Uh, so we'll get you know, a chance to see you know, Steph live. Again, there's a relationship there. We love Steph. Uh, it was a good decision. He wanted to play. He was one of those guys. We didn't want to lose Steph, but he wanted to play and be a starter. It was that, that wasn't going to happen right now with what we had depth-wise in that room. So it's a good opportunity for him to go play. I mean, I think it's important. So you know, some of those guys like that, Aiden, you know, he, he wasn't going to play. He wasn't going to you know, break the two deep. So it's good for Aiden to go you know, uh, find time. And, you know, I'm assuming I, I haven't really followed him uh, just because we don't play, but I'm hoping, you know, he's doing a nice job up there at Albany. A, a super kid. Um, again, we cried, and, you know, he cried and hugged me, and, you know, I don't think he let go. Those are, you know, those are, you know, he didn't want to leave, but he knew he, to play, he had to. The narrative across the country from fans is that coaches dread the portal. You don't dread it, do you? I don't like it. You know, I don't like it for the other, you know, for the guys you don't want to lose, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you know, I don't like it for, you know, you know, the first one that went out, you know, with Jordan Addison. And those are the ones you don't like when someone can come, you know, tamper with your, you know. It's one thing having a, a deep down conversation with a player about playing time and what's the best option for him. Because it's, you know, those guys got to, I don't know why we're on portal. We were going to talk about Youngstown State today. But, um, um, but you know, it, it's important for these kids to get what they need, what they want. And, you know, you, you, know, you, you know, a guy that wants to play, that to me is important, and you know, I'm going to help those guys get those those opportunities wherever they are. And How important do these tendency reports uh, seen? You guys use a higher percentage of, of, of your base 4-3-4 defense more than anyone else in, in, in college football right now. Uh, you use seven-man boxes more than anyone else not loading the box, and you guys keep two high shells, two safeties, you know, deep behind better than anyone else. What about your defense allows you, or what's the benefit of sticking to your base as consistently as you guys do to do all the complexity that you have on your defense? Yeah. yeah, Chris, you know, the first thing I'd say is like, you know, we know what we're doing and uh, we, we know how to line. It's, it's one of the reasons we can adjust it. We have so many ways of adjusting it, whether it be a front, a linebacker, a stunt, you know, a blitz, whatever it is. To me, like when you run too many fronts, okay, and too many coverages, you, you can never fix it because it's like, well, we're not in that coverage or that front, so how do you know? But running a consistent front, again, you know, you, that's just pre-snap. Pre-snap, we look the same. Mm -hmm. Post-snap, there's going to be lots of changes as far as what we do. Um, and uh, I, think it's, I think it's difficult. If you talk to anybody around the country, it's difficult to, and they might pre-snap might look good, but like, you know, all the things we do after the snap is the difficult thing. But I think it's the, the ability to adjust from there. I mean, if you're doing too much, it's hard to adjust what you're going to do. You're just going to change it up. Too many people bail on the defense because, oh, it's not good versus this. Well, if it's not good versus this, let's fix it. What do we? What's our tweaking to make it good versus that? We know how to fix anything. Any problem they have, we know how to fix it. Yeah, um, you know, Brian Flores reportedly use, uses a lot of concepts that you guys use uh, here now at Minnesota as their defensive coordinator. They have the number three defense. Patrick Jones has four sacks, second most in the NFL right now. And just this past weekend, Brock Purdy was on camera for crediting Brian Flores. You guys are a crazy scheme. What is it about your defense that you think maybe people don't realize that allows it to be a simpler, faster thing that can benefit you guys? Well, when people go fast tempo, like, you know, let's go, for example, when our offense is running fast, mm -hmm. okay, um, when they're going fast, it's going to put up defense most of the time in an opportunity where they better just get lined up and play base defense. So tempo offenses tend to get teams to play base and not do much because they'll screw it up because you don't have time to adjust to it. Um, with our defense, the way we keep it simple and we don't do too much, but we, we, we can call anything. We can call I mean, we go down and play Tennessee, one of the reasons we've had success against Tennessee, you're going fast, but they're not seeing the pit just line up in base and play quarters mm -hmm. all day. We get worn out. We're going to change the pass, put guys on tracks and blitz them, but they're not used to that. They, you know, Again, they don't see it coming, right? When they're going so fast, they can't see if a blitz is coming. All of a sudden, guys are running through the backfield, hitting the quarterback. It's like, ooh, 
Um, so those are the, the reasons why. So the teams want to go fast, we're able to, to do it. But you know, we play a lot of three deep, two under. Uh, I don't know if there's any, you know, uh, that's the unique thing that we play. A lot of people play quarters and, and do what we do, but we play a lot of three deep, two under, which is exotic. Uh, it's some Jerry would probably call it crazy. If, uh, if you knew a lot about coverage, most people play three deep, three under. We only go two under. We're covering 54 yards with two guys. A lot of people have stole it and tried to do it, but I don't know if they do it like we do. And um, matter of fact, I should say I don't know. I, I know they don't because I watch it on tape and, and see people do it. They just don't coach it the right way. It gives us an opportunity to make plays. But you haven't really been satisfied with the defense so far this year. What's been some of the issues? Um, just continue to stop the run. You know, again, we've been on the field a long time too. So I mean, you look at yards and, and yards per carry, we're probably not disappointed. I just like to be dominant. You know, I want to be number one in the country. That's what we want to be. So um, until we're number one in rush defense and uh, in the ACC and in the top ten in all the categories, that's that's the goal. How have you, and we like to win too. So win number one, goal number two is, you know, what do we look like? How have you evaluate, evaluated the linebacker play in depth so far, especially without Key Thompson in the lineup on yeah. Saturday? You know, I look at those two linebackers, you know, Kyle Lewis outside and, and, and Rasheed Biles on the outside. Those are two elected dudes that make a lot of plays. They're making more plays than we've made at that position the last two years. Uh, those, those, those guys uh, are really good. And then you put that with a you know, really smart middle linebacker that's playing the best football he's played since he's been here. You know, I said on my radio show last night because he's my guest. I mean, you, think, you go back to uh, the Kent State game, you know, at the end of the game when you need a play bait, he blitzes off the edge, strips the ball out of that quarterback's hand. Big play, right? That kind of sealed the deal. Uh, you go to Cincinnati, he sold the deal in the fourth quarter, blitzed through the A-gap again, hits the quarterback, you know, you know, quarterback gets, you know, gets slammed on the ground, throws an overthrow, we punt it, and, and you know, we know how that thing ended. And I think our offense got the ball down to kick a field goal. And then you look at last week just with the big, you know, um, you know, scoop and score for touchdowns. So, I mean, our linebacker group right now, um, you know, I don't know if we got six or seven of them, but right now we got three really, really good ones. Gavin and Eli were saying yesterday how it's important for them this week to play a complete game as an offense. What do you think is the key to doing that this week? You know, it's focus and execution. It's one play at a time. We talk all the time about it. Um, and, you know, again, your opponent has something to do with that, right? Sometimes it's not going to be pretty and look exactly the way you want, but. You know, it's about execution. This game is a game of execution, and you have to take care of the details. I mean, to take care of those little details, you know, the big things happen. And, and again, you play 60 minutes. Um, but, you know, you can't kill yourself with, with, with penalties and those details there. Um, so we've got to be locked in, and, and everybody's got to be on the same page. Anything else? Coach, do you like playing an FCS game this late in the season? Do you, does it really matter to you? It doesn't matter when. Um, it doesn't matter when we play them. But I, th I think it's good to have one of those on your schedule. Would you like to be the first game? Great, but you know it doesn't really matter. I mean, you know the schedules are so hard. I mean, you hear about Wake Forest dropped somebody and picked up somebody else. I mean, you know the scheduling is not easy. And sometimes you get you don't get who you want. You get who's left out there based on scheduling. So and again, then also find that date. I'm glad I don't have to schedule. I just get to say yes or no. But like try to fit them in and move somebody if this is the only date you can do it. Oh, you can't move it. Okay, we can't take you away. There's so many things going to schedule. Chris Lasala does a nice job. Junk sign or any, any of your future schedules? I don't know. I'm focusing on Young's time this week, Jerry. I don't know who even I don't even know who we open up with next year. I have no idea. So we go. I know we play Youngstown State this week.